Howdy and welcome back. Um, this is the second in a series of videos showing you how to set up and use your ZX cameras with ROS2. Check out the last video if you want to see an unboxing of the ZX camera and a visual guide for installing the GMSL2 capture card into the NVIDIA Jetson developer kit. In this video, we're going to power on the Jetson Orion AGX developer kit for the first time and show you how to set it up with the latest Jetpack, Stereolapse SDK, and ZX driver. From there, we're going to explore some of the demo applications that Stereolapse ships with the device so we can visualize some of this data for the first time. Alrighty, uh, I think we can get started. So as you can see here, this very first website that we're on is actually the uh, NVIDIA uh, general kind of how to set up your, your uh, Jetson developer kit for the first time. So on this page, there's going to be some generic, you know, what's in the box and what you need to set up and that kind of stuff. Um, but in general, there are two ways you need to set this up, either through a monitor connection or through the headless configuration. Uh, in this video, we're going to be using the display, uh, but I originally actually tried using the headless mode and I ran into a bunch of issues. So for some reason, I couldn't quite get things to set up properly and the, the connections kept being reset or rejected. Um, so ultimately, I, I went out and bought a... Um, 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 display ports to uh, HDMI cable in order to have it set up and then things work perfectly fine. So if you want to use a headless mode, it might still be wise to have a, a uh, display port to HDMI cable uh, ready so that in case you need to use the display that, uh, that that's an option for you and you don't have to go to Best Buy in um, the middle of your project. So um, once you either connect it through the, through the display or you connect it through the headless mode through the terminal, it's going to ask you to sign the end user agreement, set up a language, uh, connect to a Wi-Fi network, which you should definitely do at this point for, for the next few steps. Um, then also setting the time zone, setting up a password, and then installing Chromium. At that point, it's then going to reboot the system, and then you should essentially end up then with a uh, Ubuntu 2004 uh, desktop like you see here in, in the video. So at that point, uh, we've, we've essentially completed the first uh, step here, which is just basically just setting up the, the original machine that you now utilize. So step two is now to update or to install the Jetpack library. So this is a set of libraries needed to uh, actually utilize the GPU onside the Jetson and also a bunch of different libraries that are useful for, for general applications onside of the, the Jetson platform. So uh, we're gonna cap this file to check out what kind of versions we got here. So I happen to have R35 is my current installed version, um, but uh, basically instructions say here, anything above R35, for is perfectly fine. Um, if you have something bad or older, or you want to upgrade to something newer, make sure to uh, make sure to set up these these uh, app sources here, and that way, then when we start updating and dis upgrading software, that you're getting the uh, the latest and greatest that that's possible. So the next here is kind of standard procedure. So let's go ahead and um, update the app cache so we can see what, what uh, packages we got. And then we're going to then do a dis upgrade so we can upgrade all the packages that are, are needed on our, our computer. So I've actually already done these steps, so it's going to be very quick on my side of things. But depending on how old your machine or how long it's been sitting around, um, then you know the disk upgrade especially might take uh, you know 10, 15 minutes to install, uh, depending on how out of date it is. Um, after you've done that upgrade, you want to reboot the machine so you can utilize all the, that new software that's been installed. Um, I've already done this, so I'm not going to go ahead and reboot it. But you should definitely make sure to do that before proceeding to the next steps. After that, then we're gonna do this, this app install of the NVIDIA Jetpack, which again, I've already done, so pretty quick on my side. This one might actually take about 20 minutes to complete on your side, so um, if you're gonna be doing this, I, I would you know run it and go out and get a coffee or <laughs> talk to some of your colleagues. Um, you, you got a few minutes here that you, you could spend. But from this point, we pretty much then fully set up our Jetson board. There's nothing else we really need to do here. Uh, we now have all the Jetpack software required uh, for a general setup. So. Awesome. Uh, we can now actually now move to the specifics on the Stereo Labs ZX. So you see here on this website, which I'll link to this website and the previous website um, in the description on the video. But this is basically just going over the basics of you know what it is that, that your cameras are and set up and things you probably already know. But the most important thing on this webpage is actually this uh, table right here. So this table contains a set of guides that are needed to set up your ZX cameras, the different NVIDIA compute platforms you might have. So whether you bought a Z box directly from Stereo Labs or you have a NVIDIA um, uh, Jetson kit of some form, whether it's a Xavier or an Orion or a Nano or what have you. Um, these are basically all the setup, setup guides needed for your particular platform. So I'm using the AGX Orion dev kit, so this is the guide I'm going to select, but make sure you select your correct guide for your correct hardware, although broadly they're all kind of the same. So awesome, so we got this guide, uh, prerequisites, make sure you got your developer kit, you got your, your ZX Mini and your capture card. Um, if you follow the instructions from the first video, then pretty much everything here is good to go and you're ready to uh, move forward. Um, otherwise, uh, make sure that you actually install your capture card um, so that it's, it's on, the, on the platform and connect it to camera. So it's actually, this is a good time to, if right now, take your splitter cable and plug in the camera into it. Um, there's to be a couple steps here where we have to reboot throughout. So uh, if you just do it now, then you don't have to reboot later, but certainly um, you can also reboot uh, later if, you, if you'd like. 
Uh, it also brings up this really great uh, enclosure, which I definitely recommend getting. So that make sure that you don't have your capture card just kind of dragging on the ground. And you have this nice uh, mounting points needed for a box application. So this is actually a really nice add-on that I definitely highly recommend. And for the bulk of how, how we set up here, so we're going to set up the general Z SDK, which includes um, you know bunches of useful applications as well as the general software, and then the ZX driver specifically, which will be interacting with that uh, that carrier card um, to with the GMSL2 connector. So let's get started here with just getting the Z SDK in general. So you can see that basically two steps here are setting up Jetpack, which we already did the previous step, luckily, and then now installing the Z uh, SDK for Jetson. So let's go ahead and click that, and it'll bring us down to the Z SDK download page, and we can then select our downloads. So we can basically ignore these Ubuntu and Windows because we're using the Jetson boards right here, and you have a few different options. So you want to make sure you, you click the, the correct one for your correct platform. You can see that, for instance, my Orion HGX are actually a few different options depending on the, the versions of Jetpack. So we need to make sure we have the correct piece of software of the correct Jetpack version. So if you don't know what Jetpack version you're on, that's pretty easy to find. Just go apt show NVIDIA Jetpack. And the app cache will then tell us that we're on version 5.1 for my for my particular application and version R35.2. So you can see that Jetpack 5.1 and R35.2 line up perfectly with this download right here. So we're gonna grab that, which then again download this, uh, basically this install script. Um, while we're also on this page, we also, let's, let's grab our NVIDIA Jetson um, uh, Jetpack versions for the uh, ZX driver. So we'll grab the exact same 5.1.0. Uh, apparently there's a zero on this one and the, the 35.2. So we'll go ahead and go ahead and install that. And that's going to install a Debian package uh, this time for the uh, Debian's for the actual driver. So I think we're done with this uh, download page so we can close that guy out and we can see what it recommends we do. So let's go to this uh, downloads directory. And there we can see we got our Debian and we got our script. Um, the first thing we need to do is actually make the, the, the install script a executable. So we're going to go ahead with sudo chmod plus x on our run script right here. Um, something that actually these instructions don't mention that's important to do is that we actually need to do a sudo apt install of this um, ZSTD package, uh, which was not mentioned in the instructions, but I already did this, but make sure you go ahead and do that so that we actually are able to uh, run the script properly. So now we can look at the, the script. We see now it's green, so it's executable. So we're going to go dot slash then the Z uh, uh, run script, and we're going to just run that guy. And you see here, it's going to basically throw up a license. If you just hit Q, it just says accept. So yep, we're going to accept that license. Um, do I want to install this software? If yes, we're going to just go ahead and say yeah to all these things. Just get, get everything you, you possibly can. I'll make sure you don't put it here so we actually have the install path correctly. Um, do you want the Python API? Sure, why not? Do, 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 do. And so go ahead and so install these dependencies and all the, all this good stuff um, and uh, set up the, the SDK required for all the great capabilities that are, that are involved in this, uh, the, the SDK. So this includes things like computing depth, computing neural depth, uh, visual inertial odometry, map building, I mean, it, all the great stuff that the, uh, um, the, the, the Stereo Labs SDKs are able to accomplish. All right, well, that's still installing. Um, do I want to do those models? No, I, I, don't, I don't feel like doing that right now, and we're done. So if you keep scrolling down this list, you can see there's some other install modes, so we can only do certain versions of things, you know, with or without CUDA, without detections or certain different different items. Um, you know, I just want to make sure we got everything that we could possibly want. We got plenty of space on this computer, so may as well just grab everything, and it only takes a few minutes just to, just to install. Alrighty, uh, well, I think we're done with this guy. We've got the SDK all installed, and it's complete, and it seems to be happy, so we're good to go. So the next thing we're gonna do is then install the ZX driver itself. So uh, in our downloads, you see we still have this, uh, this Debian package right here. So we're gonna go ahead and unpack that and install it. So we're gonna go sudo dp, dpkg dash i, uh, i is for install, and then we're going to install that package. Um, as you can see here, I've already installed it. So we're actually just basically just updating the exact same thing, but hey, ne that never hurts. Um, and uh, yep, we're good to go. The only thing that's good to mention here is that um, sometimes, I guess for some installs, you might need to manually install uh, Qt5. So go ahead and just run that command. Um, I found that actually it's already came pre-installed uh, on my machine, but in case you, you don't have that, it's, it's always good to uh, make sure you have that. And from this point, so we now have the SDK and we now have the ZX driver uh, available to us. And so we're pretty much good to go. Um, so at this point, um, this is where you would now reboot your computer. Um, so before you do this, good to make sure that if you've not yet connected your camera, you should now connect your camera. And then when you reboot your machine, then it should auto detect on, on boot and be ready to go. But 
since I had actually already installed all this stuff, um, and I basically booted my machine already, that if we just check this next next instruction, we can see that there are some kernel logs as relating to detecting the ZX camera. So we, we actually could continue with these steps without having to do a reboot, but you should make sure to do that reboot before you, you attempt this. Um, obviously, there's not going to be any kernel messages if it's not been detected yet, so um, even if you run this, you should basically notice that nothing comes up until you do a reboot. Um, if you should unplug or replug in the camera, you can actually use the, the uh, system CTL, system control, uh, in order to restart the daemon related to the ZX driver so that you can um, you know, detect new cameras or removed cameras or what have you from, from the system. But uh, we don't need to do that for this particular application, so we can continue moving on. So now that we have the basically everything installed, we can see that the, the cameras have been detected and ready to go. Uh, we can now check out some of these cool user applications that uh, come included with it. So it looks like we, we install everything into this local uh, user local. So let's go ahead and check that out. User local, all right, we got the Z that it's, it says it should. So cool, we got Z. And we've got drivers, firmware, documentation, et cetera, et cetera. But let's go ahead and just go to these tools just to check out some of these applications. Um, so yeah, these are just some end user applications that we can use to just grab some first first look data and some applications just to see um, how these are working. So I think uh, a good place to start here is just the depth explorer. So let's look at the depth this uh, this camera produces. So we're gonna go ahead and just dot slash to execute the depth uh, the depth viewer. Yep, and there we go. So we can see this uh, the depth information here. So we see that we got the left view, got the right view, got the side by side. <laughs> That's funny. Let's go into the left view. Uh, what are we measuring? Depth. Confidence. Oh, it's kind of cool. You see, like, like a line follower. So, go to depth. And, I mean, look how clean that is. I mean, it's really nice. And I mean, this min C is like, yeah, I mean, it's about about a foot or so. Yeah. And then back out. What else can we see? Huh. Yeah. Yeah, pretty clean. Pretty clean depth information out there. Yeah, sweet. Um, you can see that the IC now, now is zero. It's got the serial number of the camera here. Um, we're at 60 frames per second. You know, we can do like 30, I guess. Oops. Takes a minute <laughs> to process that. Yeah, there we go. 30, a little bit less smooth, probably uses less of the GPU to, to process it. Um, but yeah, like, what, what else do we got here? So this is the neural depth that we got here. So if we're gonna say, like, let's go for your, for quality, so rather than using like a um, uh, neural network to to increase the quality, maybe, or inc increase the, the sparsity, or the density of the points, um, let's instead use a, a quality-based feature, which is still using like stereo feature matching. So yeah, there we go. Um, you know, high performance method. I guess they have to restart. Oh, yeah, interesting. Cool. So, yeah, you know, lower quality, but then you you, you can run it at a faster and faster rate. Um, and what else do we got here? You know, brightness, contrast, saturation. You know, I don't want to mess with any of these settings for the for the camera. I, I assume the uh, the folks at Stereo Labs know what they're doing better than than I do, <laughs> uh, set, setting those things up. So, um, the def stability. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Say, yeah. Why not? Let's say fifty four percent. Why not? What does that even do? Oh, cool. So just like, I think it just buffers additional frames to you know to see if it, the the depth is stable or not. So let's just put that back down to where it was before. It was like eleven like percent, ten percent. Yeah, whatever. Same thing. Yeah, but cool. Yeah, but basically this is a, a neat little application so that you can just uh, try out different features of the camera, see, the, see what the depth information looks like, and see the cameras and the, the, basically the, the point clouds as they appear. So yeah, I mean, this is a nice, nice little application. Let's go ahead and close this guy out and go to, go to another one. So uh, the other one I really want to show you here was this um, ZFoo. I'm actually really excited about this one. This is, a, this is the their 3D environmental mapping software. So this will actually take all the different RGBD camera images and make it into a mesh environment of the world. So you can use that for like mapping and localization, other, other things like that. So um, yeah, let's just go with like the general like, you know, quality. So we're not gonna go with like the ultra neural, neural or ultra high quality. Let's just go with the kind of the standard depth quality and set the input to our live camera. And then it'll start the, this mapping process. That's pretty cool. So you can see here again, you know, here, here's me, here's the depth camera, and on, on the other side you can see the, the map being built as we as we move this camera around. So we can see that my living room, you know, has like you know a ceiling, got this nice, nice little light fixture. There's me over here, you know, uh, my woodworking kind of stuff, and here's the ground. You know, let's just kind of move this all around all around the place, and uh, yeah. So now if we start actually the mapping process, then you can see like here, here's me, and here's that that mesh of my of my body. And then it's like, you know, computing all that, all the depth information based on the points and coloring that mesh. It's kind of ne pretty neat. Let's go back down, go around, just go behind here. 
yeah, so it just creates this really nice mesh of the environment around you uh, that you can use for, for mapping. So if you stop it, it's in a post process, and I'm kind of kind of, kind of interested to see like you know what this look like for for a real person view. So yeah, I mean that's pretty pretty accurate. It's pretty good to to getting all these these surfaces of these weird weird textures. So I'm actually really excited to see try, try this out more on a mobile robot context where I actually put this like, you know, on a robot and drive around to see how big and, and, and nice the environment is. But I mean this is really cool uh, to be able to have these these surface meshes to work with. Uh, and I'm really excited about what it is that we can enable with this with, in the mobile robotics context. So yeah, um, so those are the, basically the uh, there's a couple of the, the great uh, applications you can use here. You can use it also to, to view sensor data, uh, do diagnostics, uh, calibration, all that kind of good stuff. But I don't think we need to go over those here today, but I think there's a pretty good understanding of all the different kind of capabilities these, these depth cameras have. Um, and we can go into more detail with the actual ROS2 driver in, in the next set of videos. So yeah, so I think hopefully by the end of this video, you should have been able to uh, you know, boot up your, your Jetson uh, Orion or other kind of J Xavier equivalent boards, uh, set up uh, Jetpack, set up the, the SDK, set up the ZX driver, actually get this data and have the viewers work. Um, so yeah, a lot, a lot got done here in the last, I don't know, what is this, 15 minutes? <laughs> yeah, so uh, you're now off the races to get the data off the camera and you can now integrate your ZX camera into whatever your application is. So, and the next video, I'm going to actually be using the ZX camera with ROS2, so using the ROS2 drivers and the ROS2 SDK in order to actually then, you know, set up uh, working with, with uh, autonomous navigation with Nav2 or using their different advanced spatial AI features that they have in their SDK, so things like their visual inertial odometry, things like that ZFU <laughs> 3D mapping that we saw previously, um, and then 3D object tracking and detection. So uh, stay tuned for the next video, hopefully coming out in the next week or two, that we can uh, discuss uh, actually integrating now this technology now that you have all your, your software and hardware set up. Um, into your real-world application. Um, thanks, and I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Cheers.